So at ACR 2023, uh, we presented the first in human results for a, a quite novel molecule uh, called E602, which is a first in human bisialidase approach to try to treat cancer. So in the Glimmer 01 study, we evaluated E602 as a bisialidase approach for cancer immunotherapy. And it's important to take a step back and describe what is this field because it's relatively new. So siglics are a large family of sialoglycan sensing ITIM containing checkpoint receptors, and we sometimes call them glycoimmune checkpoints. And there are 14 different siglics, but nine of them have a similar ITIM domain to the PD-1 receptor. And when we look at the downstream signaling from there, we actually see very similar to that which is already known to drive immune responses in cancer. Uh, and these sialoglycans, uh, which bind to cyclic receptors, have been known to be associated with bad outcomes in cancer for many decades. But it wasn't until very recently, uh, with the work of Dr. Carolyn Bertozzi, who won the Nobel Prize last year for chemistry, uh, that we actually were able to find a mechanistic association between these uh, cyclics and bad outcomes. And cyclics bind to sialic acid residues, um, which uh, are... Um, covering uh, immune cells and the tumor cells in the tumor microenvironment, and there's quite a degree of redundancy. And this was the rationale for development of the bisialidase approach, essentially to try to reduce the amount of sialic acid exposed on the cancer cell surface around the T cells in hopes that that might trigger anti-tumor immunity. So the Glimmer 01 study was the dose escalation portion investigating the bisialidase E602. Uh, and in the clinical trial, we dose escalated uh, this first in human molecule from one milligram per kilogram up through 30 milligrams per kilogram. Um, and we uh, managed the uh, side effect profile, which was actually quite uh, easy to manage. There were very few uh, grade three and four events. There were no dose limiting toxicities. Um, and we saw pharmacodynamic effects that suggested that we were having the kind of immune responses that we were looking for. So in our dose escalation study, we demonstrated the safety of E602 up to 30 milligrams per kilogram with a manageable safety profile that was mostly characterized by infusion reactions at the higher doses. Uh, we were able to mitigate these without major issue, however. Um, the drug is given on a weekly basis. Uh, and essentially what we were able to show in this study was that the drug is safe. Uh, and we'll look forward to the subsequent study looking at monotherapy activity in defined cohorts of patients, specifically in melanoma and non-small cell lung cancer. And subsequent to that, there will be a combination dosing regimen with anti-PD-1. Uh, very importantly, we were able to show dose proportionate low, uh, uh, pharmacokinetic uh, uh, properties to E602. Uh, and in the peripheral blood, we're able to demonstrate uh, on-target uh, desilation uh, of immune cells that led to activation in the CD8 uh, as well as uh, CD4 and NK cell compartments, as well as elaboration of peripheral blood cytokines that were consistent with the kind of immune response that we see with other immune checkpoint inhibitor approaches. So IP10, TNF-alpha, and MYP1-beta all run up, notably with the rise consistent with that that we see in the treatment-naive setting for nivolumab plus ipilimumab in melanoma. So overall, a safety profile that was advantageous uh, and peripheral blood immune monitoring that suggested uh, potential activity when moved to the right population of patients. So this study is obviously a phase one safety finding study for this novel molecule. So I think this study is uh, quite important because this is the first time in human beings uh, with cancer that we've attempted desilation as a therapeutic approach in cancer. So we showed that that is safe to administer. Uh, and in this uh, population of heavily pretreated patients, we were able to show peripheral blood activation of, of immune cells that was consistent with what was seen in the preclinical models. So all of that I think is very exciting with, given this new class of agents to surely then try to look at what kind of activity can we see in a population of patients who are more likely to benefit from immuno-oncology approaches, i.e. melanoma and non-small cell lung cancer. So this is really a new area of biology and cancer uh, research. And it's very exciting to see that on our first pass, we are getting the early signs uh, suggestive that we're impacting the science and biology in a way that might be meaningful for subsequent clinical trials.